very good morning. This is The Breakfast Club on 938. Now, we are talking food and beverage business this morning. Now, we're told that 59% of F&B businesses closed within three years of opening because of a variety of issues. Earlier when Paul, Susan and I were talking, Paul said it was service issues that uh, the customer service experience that uh, put him off uh, these businesses. Well, there are a couple some due to issues stemming from poor marketing to bad locations, but we're told, more importantly, they close because of the inconsistent customer experience. Uh, Dr. Ko Wee Lit, he is the CEO of Habitat Blue and the people behind Orca Boss, saw a need to develop uh, a software to help restaurateurs manage their outlets and particularly their staff more efficiently. But before I go on and on and on, Dr. Ko, welcome into the Breakfast Club. Tell us about Orca Boss. Boss business operating system. Why the need, sir? Is it because your own customer experience uh, was uh, found wanting when you went into F and B outlets? Yeah. Um, good morning, everyone. So the idea of Oka Boss, right, started when we were actually approached mm-hmm. by a F and B company. Right. Um, they were running a restaurant. They had grand plans mm-hmm. to actually expand their business. Right. Um, but their boss had a vision. Their boss is saying that he doesn't want to run the business mm-hmm. within the restaurant itself right. every day. He wants to focus his attention on trying to grow the business itself. So um, we went in, we built a system for them. Um, basically, it's a tablet ordering system. Um, at the time, my company was actually doing uh, video games development. And uh, one of the genres that we were um, kind of researching mm-hmm. at the time was actually time management games as well. Okay. Um, so you have, you have a game to manage your time, Dr. Ko? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so right. one of the um, titles that um, you might be familiar with right. is um, Diner Dash. Okay. Uh, we didn't actually develop the game, right. but we were researching casual games at that time. Mm-hmm. And uh, time managing game was one of our interests. Mm-hmm. So we look at, uh, you know, both... Uh, you know, the real life system, sure. the real life challenge of running a restaurant itself, um, you know, where the waiter have to run around the whole restaurant and, um, you know, taking orders, ensuring that customers don't get fed up and walk away because the orders were late right. or missing orders or wrong um, special requests. Um, then we see the similarity on the game side. Okay. So we then took the system a bit further. So that was the inspiration of it. Okay. So when the customer experience... Uh in an F&B outlet, you know, it's, it, it varies from customer to customer. Some want uh, an intrusive uh, s- uh, server who knows what's on the menu, and some just want the facts. Just tell me what's uh, the special of the day, and then just leave me alone until I need you. Uh, does this uh, particular software help in this sort of uh, scenario? Okay, so sometimes the customer doesn't want to be interrupted, like right. you say. Yeah, so you know this is this is more like um, uh, personal training. So if you ask me whether the system helps it or not, I'd mm-hmm. rather say that um, the system helps the businesses right. retain their waiters. Right now, how does that happen? Retain the waiters. Yes, that's a, that's a, a novel idea yes. these days, and when everybody wants to get rid of the waiters. Um, okay, I'll put it this way: um, in any FMB or any business for that matter, um, the the rank and file is the mm-hmm. one that's driving a business. Sure. So if they keep um, having high turnover, mm-hmm. what happens is the new people who comes in are not familiar for menu. Right. So instead of providing the right customer service, it actually pisses the customer off. Okay. Because it, it says that I don't know the I don't know that and right. I have to run back and forth between the kitchen to say how does this look like? How right. does it taste like? Is it sweet or sour? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Right? So then you ask me how, how would the system actually help to retain right. the, the waiters themselves? Sure. So we have to understand the, the myself of a waiter. Why are they working in the restaurant? Okay. okay? Well, one of it is probably they need a job. Mm-hmm. They need money for it. Um, second of all, is somebody need pocket money. Yeah, it's definitely. a part-time job definitely. in the F&B business. Yeah. So imagine that if you if you are working in a restaurant and every day the kitchen is a war zone, mm-hmm. you run back and forth to the kitchen itself. You get scolded by the chef. Right. Of, of no, no fault of your own. Right. Right. And then you go to the customer, try to explain it, and the customer scolds you. Okay. Right. How long will you stay in the restaurant? I think I'd last a maximum of twenty-four hours. The right. first day I'll be out right. the door. 
Right. Yeah. So by streamlining that that whole process, right, right, you actually reduce the conflict at the front of house and mm-hmm. you reduce the conflict at the back of house. Okay. So if there's less chaos in the kitchen itself, um, the food that comes out is more consistent. There'll be less missed orders. There'll be less wrong orders. Mm-hmm. The waiters get scolded lesser. They get more compliments. They get higher job satisfaction. They stay. Okay. Uh, but how does this uh, stop the friction? You know, humans being humans, how does it stop the friction? Okay. So you realize that um, in, in the kitchen itself, right? If you rely on pen and paper, for example, mm-hmm. you have taken the orders, you pass sure. it to the kitchen. Right. Um, if it's busy, if it's not so busy, it's fine. I can read right. it. But if it's busy, right, I may misread it. Okay. I may misread to say that, okay, I don't want onion in my soap, for okay. example. Right. Right. But using the system itself, everything digitized. So there's no running between the front of house and the back of house. Okay. So communication so is would it be a tablet that uh, the server would key into, yes. or the, or would it be just uh, the customer that keys in his uh, his order? Okay. So there's two modes of operations. The first way is the waiters will key mm-hmm. in the orders themselves, right? Because bearing in mind that customers might not be tech savvy as well. Sure. So they may say that I come to a restaurant. Why am I ordering it myself? Okay. I want service. Mm-hmm. Okay, um, so the, the 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 business owners have the um, opportunity to say either order it myself or you let the customer order it. Okay, okay. so depends depend on, on the demographics that visit the restaurant itself. Younger um, audience would say, uh, sorry, younger customers would say, I want to order it myself because it's fun. Right. Um, older customers will say, please order for me. I don't want to touch the tablet. Okay. okay? <laughs> so when all this is done, everything gets sent to the kitchen. Mm-hmm. You have a display on it. Um, it, it, it's first in, first out. Um, it has all the special requests. So rather than having your whole restaurant full of dockets, mm-hmm. of orders, you only uh, process it when you're ready to make it. 669-11938 is our number. If you want to get in on the conversation, we're talking about streamlining the processes in F&B outlets. Uh, we are speaking with Dr. Ko Wee Lit. He's the man behind uh, Habitat Blue, also the company behind Orca Boss, which has developed a software to help uh, F&B businesses do just that. Uh, Dr. Ko, we talked now from uh, the customer perspective about enhancing their experience, but in view of the fact that 59% of uh, F&B outlets seem to tank after three years of business, what's the biggest problem facing them? I mean, uh, we talked about, is it cost? Is it manpower? And how does this system help them get around all of this? Okay. I think um, for F&B businesses, one of the key challenges is maintaining consistent customer experience. In consistent uh, product. Yes, yes, consistent product, consistent offering. Right. So we see problems where when businesses scale mm-hmm. uh, beyond five stores, you realize that the key people who have founded the concept itself get stretched. Right. They can't be running between all the stores all the time, mm-hmm. um, firefighting. Um, and then what happens is they should be spending their time sourcing for better ingredients, sourcing for better deals, sourcing for better sites to right. open their new stores. So sometimes in the, in, in the peak of firefighting of daily operations, they didn't have enough time to look at, okay, whether the new site they're opening has the right traffic that they want. Right. And when you sign that tenancy agreement with the malls, you're locked in. Okay. The renovation that you spent is locked in. And then, you know, you have a store there that is not performing like the rest of the stores. Right. Um, and there could be so much operational issues within that store itself. Like, for example, unable to get the right managers, unable to get the right waiters, high turnover for your manpower. Sure. That you basically destroy the entire customer experience of, of um, your and, customers. Right. Yeah. And when customers visit the shop themselves, they treat the entire um, experience as a singular brand. Okay. They wouldn't say that I have a bad experience at um, one mall, mm-hmm. so if I go and try the other mall. It doesn't work that way. Right. And then they'll start rentering on the um, social media, right? Mm-hmm. Once, you know, they have a bad review on social media, that's it. The entire brand is gone. Oh, dear. Uh, and I can uh, recount a certain uh, steak uh, place uh, that got hit by something like this, and they weren't particularly happy, and I don't see them around anymore. Uh, 669-11938 is the number. Get in on the conversation if you want to. Speaking this morning with uh, Dr. Ko Wee Lit uh, from Habitat Blue. Uh, what else does uh, Orca Blue... Orca uh, I beg your pardon, Orca Boss do, in order to keep uh, the F&B outlet in business, is it uh, beneficial only for a large-scale operation when you have the economies of scale, or does it benefit small companies as well? Okay, so 
one of the um, issues that were not very well addressed, at least in the F&B market, um, is actually supply chain. Um, there are a lot of systems out there that looks at you know um, customer loyalty programs, but um, there are limited solutions out there that actually looks at the supply chain. So why is the supply chain important? In order to ensure that your food quality is good, you need to ensure that you have consistent supply from a supplier. If, for example, you could not get a, 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 a good supply chain, then your own materials will fluctuate. Sometimes you get from this supplier, sometimes you get from that supplier. Okay, um, So some businesses, they do have a couple of um, um, suppliers in, in stock. So having a consistent supply chain, right, which, which means that you need to order at the right time. If you order at the right time, the shelf life of your raw materials, right, in, in the fridge itself, is kept fresh, fresh. Okay. And that freshness actually affects your food quality as well. You know, being, I know that is always of a paramount importance for an F&B outlet if I'm a restaurateur, but as a customer and an operator of an outlet, uh, would uh, monitoring my staff be high on my agenda? You know, who is getting what from the suppliers and perhaps taking a cut? Um, that's possible. So what happens is with the integrated um, operating system that we have, you we have um, the ability to track the purchase orders. We have the ability to track the delivery orders. And we have a very complex, uh, uh, comprehensive recipe system. So the recipe system has the concept of recipe and sub-recipe. And therefore, you can, at the end of the day, understand what is your theoretical usage, what is your actual usage, what is the variance. Right? From there, you can actually track preferage. Speaking this morning with Dr. Ko Wee Lit, uh, the man behind Orca Boss, uh, which is a software that helps uh, FNB outlets track and uh, minimize the inconsistent customer experience. We will come back and talk about competition when The Breakfast Club continues after headline news. Stay with us. Good morning. The Breakfast Club with Keith D'Souza. The Breakfast Club with Keith D'Souza. Speaking this morning with Dr. Ko Wee Lit. He is the CEO of Habitat Blue and the company behind Orca Boss, which is an, a software in, in its essence helping F&B outlets manage their customer experience, the inconsistent customer experience, uh, I may add. Dr. Ko, welcome back uh, into the program. Let's talk about the competition. It seems to be everywhere you go these days, anymore, it seems to be F&B chock-a-block. Every outlet, every second outlet is an F&B outlet, and the competition must be intense, especially in managing these uh, outlets. Uh Tell us about uh, how you can stay, how you stay ahead of the competition. Um, okay, so we think that we are not just selling a IT solution. Mm -hmm. We are actually selling a change management process right. for our businesses. So when we approach a customer, we do try to convince their senior management to say that you need to streamline your operations in order to stay ahead of a competition. Right. Would you rather be solving customer service issues every day? Right. Or would you rather be um, sourcing for new ingredients, better ingredients, um, R&D, new, new menu items to attract new customers? Basically, doing, customers? concentrating on your core business. That's right. And if we are talking... We like I just talked about, uh, the sort of seemingly saturated F&B market, every second business that's opened in Singapore seems to be an F&B outlet. Uh, do you think this is sustainable? I, mean, I know I'm putting you on the spot right now, but uh, that is a stream of your business. Is it sustainable to have F&B outlets constantly? I think um, when there are more outlets, right, there is actually more competition as well, as what you mentioned. Okay. Uh, what happens is actually enforces the businesses to be more innovative. So obviously, if, if the if the MAB businesses don't come with new concepts, if you don't come up with um, new ideas that will attract the target market, then obviously they will not be able to survive that long as well. What is the typical shelf life of a new concept restaurant? We talked about three years, 59 of them end uh, or wind up their business, is that a trend or is that uh, factored in in an owner's or an operator's uh, business plan? Okay, so there are actually several issues in that. Okay, first of all is we do have clients who have been in business for more than 15 years. Yes. Okay, so they run their business for 15 years and they have been getting consistently good customers. Um, what, what happens is people get fatigue of a certain food. Okay. Right? They need variety. 
right? So some businesses, what happens is, in my opinion, um, they open up a lot of branches over the island. They make it accessible. Right. But they have not done, they may or may not have done um, sufficient uh, research on whether there's a market large enough to support it. So there are many reasons why brands disappear. Right. Um, of course, one of it um, is what we advocate is customer experience. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's overstretching the brand itself uh, without understanding that the, the market, there's, there isn't such a big market to uh, accept that kind of food. Sure. Um, sometimes it's just wrong location. Um, sometimes it's internal problems because the, as the company, uh, company grows, mm -hmm. uh, they didn't have the structure to support the growth itself. Talk to us about traditional businesses. There are certain uh, restaurants uh, that have been around since I have, so it's a pretty long, and one I can talk is, is in Chin Sui Road, one of my favourite uh, restaurants. In traditional settings, how receptive are they to perhaps uh, digitization? Okay, so we actually see two challenges, right? Um, first of all, um, as we said, we are not just selling a point of sale system. Mm -hmm. We are actually selling a change management process. Okay. Right. So for any change to be successful, there are two components. One, um, the customer or rather the merchant himself mm -hmm. or the restaurant himself would need to be comfortable and right. they would need to trust the solution provider. Right. Okay. Um, the second, of course, is that they need, to be, they need to be certain that there is always someone there mm -hmm. to help them when things go wrong. Uh -huh. So it's the initial learning curve that they are resistant to and not that they're resistant to technology sure. in general. Okay. Okay. So to, to overcome that, what we do, we have, two, we have two strategies. First of all, when we go to a restaurant, we don't try to change the operational flow. Okay. Instead, we change our software so that there's a point of similar, uh, familiarity mm -hmm. for the operators within the restaurant. So they may need to change their behavior for maybe 10%, 20%, mm -hmm. the way that they work. But we will actually customize the software such that 80% of the workflow is retained. So you don't see like there's a sudden shock of change. So it's not a resistance to tech, but a resistance to change. Let's talk about franchising. You talked about people opening different uh, locations or different outlets at different locations. Franchising seems to be big uh, business these days. Do If someone up uses your system, would the franchisees use the same one and how does it help or impede them? Okay. So it depends. Um, we see a lot of Singapore brands actually venturing overseas. Right. So our system did follow some of the brands overseas as well. But bearing in mind that every country uh, has its own point of sale system as well, mm -hmm. has its own challenges. For example, um, in Singapore, we are more receptive towards software as a service. Right. But to our neighboring countries, they are more used to paying a one sum for the software itself and then be done with it. Okay. Or they don't have the mindset that they have to invest so much in technology. So there's a lot of education. So as we go overseas, we also learn a lot ourselves as well. We interact with different business owners. Uh, we, we evaluate to see that whether they're ready for tech. If the upper management is in a mode that, no, technology is not important for my business right now, then no matter what we try to do at the outlet itself, it will not work. Is that the be all and end all of Habitat Blue? The software uh, for F&B outlets. What else do you guys do? Okay, so we think that um, we, we, we have seen a lot of systems in the market itself. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of them were more general, okay. which means that it caters to both retail, hospitality, and maybe to F&B. Mm -hmm. We think that uh, we have not solved all the problems in F&B. So Oka sure. Boss is still very much focused on F&B. Okay. Uh, when... Your, did you always want to get into the, well, pseudo F&B business, uh, Dr. Ko? No. So um, it, 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 came, it came... I know someone a, approached you. Yeah. So your, your background would be computers and uh, everything connected. Technology. Yes, right? technology. You, right. So um, there was one, there was, there's one clicking point for F&B mm -hmm. is that it's actually similar to games. So when we do games, right, okay. uh, we actually reach out to the customers. We interact with, the, with our players. Okay. So this is one of the jobs that we enjoy. So in this case, our customers are actually operators. Mm -hmm. So what happens is, uh, at least for me, when I, when, I, when I interact with the customers, I actually treat them as a player of my system. Right. So in terms of interaction with them, it's actually the same. We talked uh, every time we talk about with uh, data analysts or technology 
visionaries, uh, the next phase of the business would be artificial intelligence. The next phase of uh, the business would be augmented reality, virtual reality. Are we approaching at all uh, that scenario in uh, the F&B business, especially here in Singapore? Okay, so let's talk about um, two items that we have raised, artificial intelligence and AR, VR. Okay. Mm -hmm. I will probably start with AR, VR first. Sure. Okay. Um, one thing that I think is a barrier is the cost of adoption. Okay. So right now we already have problem or rather challenges mm -hmm. to convince um, business owners to spend a bit more okay. on IT systems. So if you're going to add to the bill, you know, uh, VR glasses or AR glasses, sure. it's going to blow right? Mm -hmm. They will tell you that the first thing I need is to optimize and streamline my business, right? right? These are gimmicks to them. So I need to save business. costs rather than incur more of it. Yes, that's right. Okay. Um, now, let's talk about artificial intelligence. Uh, we think that that is a trend, mm -hmm. uh, but what happens is there needs to be more data. So, there's no point to implement artificial intelligence for a single store. Right. There needs to be enough data across stores to implement any form of um, process automation when it comes to uh, prediction. For example, um, let's say I need to predict the amount of raw materials I need to order for the coming week. Mm -hmm. Okay, So rather than saying that I only have data from one store and try to predict from it, I actually need to have the entire brand performance. Sure. And the first step to achieving that is actually to convert the entire chain to the same platform. Mm -hmm. Or um, the other way to put it is probably to use blockchain where there is a distributed ledger where information can be shared. So until that can be achieved, um, higher level artificial intelligence or machine learning wouldn't be that beneficial to businesses. So for the time being, you still need your Excel spreadsheet. Yes. <laughs> Six six nine double one nine three eight uh, is our number. You're listening to uh, the Breakfast Club on nine three eight. Now we are speaking this morning with Dr. Ko Wheelit. Dr. Ko is the CEO of Habitat Blue and the company behind Orca Boss. Uh, Doc, uh, talk to us about gaming. Are you developing any new games uh, other than uh, perhaps uh, monetizing uh, software solutions for F and B outlets? Okay. So a bit about um, games development. So what happens is um, in traditional education, what happens in, in, in uh, we were taught to say that the first thing that you need to do is actually come out with a game design document, a technical design document or art design document. Mm -hmm. So what we have learned um, during the process of developing a solution for Oka is that we need to approach um, games development from a business perspective first. Okay. So similar to addressing problems in that, um, addressing market gaps and, and problems within the F&B space, um, the games that we developed have to address a market um, gap as well. So this is something that we're researching on. You're listening to The Breakfast Club on 938 Live. Joined this morning by Dr. Kowi Lit, CEO of Habitat Blue. They're the company behind Orca. Boss, uh, The Breakfast Club will come back uh, for one more installment in just a couple of minutes. Stay with us. Good morning. The Breakfast Club with Keith D'Souza. The Breakfast Club with Keith D'Souza. In the final moments of The Breakfast Club, we are joined this morning by Dr. Ko Wee Lit, CEO of Habitat Blue, the company behind Orca Boss, which is uh, software that helps FNB outlets uh, manage their business a whole lot better. Dr. Ko, we talked about uh, the gaming portion as well as how it evolved into Orca Boss. What do you think, right? now about the future of the F&B industry? Is it going to be completely automated? You talked about retaining staff, but in the day years, days, months and years to come, it might be completely automated from uh, chefs right down to uh, the servers. Um, okay, my personal take about F&B and why it is um, ev evolving, uh, evolving over the time is that unlike the retail experience, I think people come together uh, for a meal for a right. reason. It's a social activity. Okay. Okay. So imagine going to an outlet where you have only vending machines and robots cooking food for you. Okay. It destroys the entire experience. Sure. I think there is something magical about a dining experience mm -hmm. between two people, between the family, where people catch up, people share ideas, or you know, between between friends itself. Or that, people date. Yeah, yeah. You know yeah. that. So imagine going to a cold, lifeless place and there's no people inside. Everything is served by robots. I think that destroys the experience. We're told, but that is the way to go if you really want to cut down costs and up productivity. 
how can people up productivity with your software? Okay, so for example, um, they will be able to automate their, their mundane tasks. For example, let's think about um, the role of a restaurant manager. Okay. Um, typically, he starts his day opening the store, checking cash, um, checking the stock, you know, um, placing orders to suppliers, um, handling HR issues, you know, staff not coming and uh, not turning up for work, they find replacement. So ingredient think, preparation. Yes, ingredient preparation. Sure. Right? So imagine that um, an integrated system that is able to do prediction mm -hmm. is to be able to help them plan in advance. Um, is to be able to help them reduce the uncertainty in running the business itself. It frees up a lot of their time. Freeing up time, uh, making the most of the customer experiences, what uh, Dr. Ko We Lit is passionate about. Dr. Ko is the CEO of Habitat Blue. They've developed Orca Boss, which uh, helps uh, restaurants address the inconsistent customer experience and a whole lot more. Dr. Ko, thank you so much uh, for making it in. Say, we, you'll come back and talk to us again. In the meantime, your markets are coming up. Uh, Stephen Innes from uh, Oanda is waiting patiently. Keep us uh, right here on 938 now. And uh, we're coming back in a moment. The Breakfast Club with Keith D'Souza.